In a previous video on the channel, we implemented internationalization in Next.js's app router using a middleware. Now in this video, we're going to remove the default locale from the URL. So if the user is trying to access your homepage and is using your default language, for example, English, which is presented by EN, instead of going to forward slash EN, they can just go to forward slash. Or if they're trying to access your about page, instead of going to forward slash EN, forward slash about, they can just go to forward slash about. Now, if you haven't watched that video, I recommend watching that first where I explain internationalization, what it is, and different strategies that you can use to implement it in Next.js, specifically in the app router. And we actually also built this project using a middleware and then come back to this video as an update to just remove the default locale from the URL. We're going to continue where we left off in the previous video, but for folks who haven't watched that or just as a refresher, I'm going to go over our implementation from a high level and then we're going to actually make the changes and the updates. By the way, there's going to be a link in the description to the source code project on GitHub. And I'm going to actually also create a different branch called remove default locale. So if you want to see the end result, please check out that branch. I'm not going to change and update the main branch to not interfere with the previous video while you can actually access the updated code in the new branch. Now from a high level to implement internationalization in the app router, we first moved all the pages, layouts and components inside this dynamic route segment called lang or locale, which gave us access to this property in all of our page and layout components on the params objects that's automatically sent to our components by Next.js, where we can then use this locale or language property to call our get dictionaries function we defined inside of our lib to load the correct JSON or the correct translations for uh, the locale that the user is trying to access. And as a reminder, we had this different uh, locale or different dictionaries stored in this dictionaries folder. We had two for English and Deutsch, where we define different scopes. This can be mapping to pages, to components, whatever localization uh, pattern that you want to use. But these JSON objects actually include the translations that we want. And our get dictionaries function is just going to load the proper one depending on the locale that's passed to the dynamic segment of our pages. We also included this i18 config where we defined our default locale, the locales that we want to support and the type of this locale. So we can type any any time that we are using these parameters in other places in our app. Now going back to our middleware here for a second to actually also explain what we were doing here. We used uh, the negotiator and this Intel local matcher libraries to create this get locale function. This is going to look at the requests header to see if there's any accept language there and define, depending on that, define what locale is the user is trying to access. And if there is none, it's going to just default to our default locale. Now inside of our middleware, we first looked at the request path name to see if it has the locale inside of it by looping over or mapping over the locales that we already have here or we already support or defined inside of our i18 config. If the path name already has a locale, we don't do anything. It just moves on, renders the page. But if the path was missing, we call this get locale function. We defined up and we got the locale back and we just added that locale to the path name and redirected the user now to this URL that actually contains a locale, which is going to then be picked up inside of this app in this dynamic segment. And then the rest, we already know what happens. Now, what we want to do inside this middleware, when the request URL doesn't actually include the locale, instead of adding it all the time, what if we can just check and see if they're actually trying to access our default language, we're not going to actually add this one. But instead of redirecting them to a URL that doesn't have a locale, which is going to break our app,
because everything is now inside of this dynamic segment, we're going to rewrite the URL. So they're going to still be going to this URL, but up in the URL, the user is not going to see the locale added there. So let me just show you here if this doesn't make sense while I'm explaining. So I'm going to check to see if this locale that I'm getting back out of calling this get locale function, which is going to check to check the incoming request and see what locale they're trying to access. So I'm going to say if this locale actually equals my default locale, so i18.default locale, well then, instead of redirecting, why not? I will do the same thing that I'm doing here, but I just rewrite to this new URL. So what would happen or how these two are different is that now behind the scenes or under the hood, we're sending the user to this URL, which is going to be picked up by our, our app router and the dynamic lang segment inside of it. But up in the URL for the user, they're not going to see any difference. So they're still going to be accessing a path name that's missing the locale. So they're going to go to forward slash to access our homepage. Under the hood, we're just sending them to forward slash en, but up in the URL, they're just going to see forward slash. So let's save this up. And now if I remove the en from the current URL, we should still see the homepage. If I now go ahead and access the forward slash about, this is still works because under the hood, this forward slash about comes to this middleware. It is missing the locale, but because I'm using English, which is a default locale, instead of redirecting me to a URL that contains the locale, it just rewrites me so it preserves the URL as I have entered it there, but also under the hood passes me to this URL with the locale. So this is the first piece or the first update inside of our middleware which allows us to remove the locale from our middleware. Now, we have to also update this links because if I'm on the homepage now, these links are actually forwarding me to forward slash en or forward slash en forward slash about. Also, when we're switching our locale or our language with this language switcher or locale switcher, it is going to still redirect us back to en. Now, if we go to the en forward slash about, it still works because, well, this time it comes in here, it actually is not missing. So this doesn't even run when we're going to forward slash in forward slash about. It's just going to render that page. It gets picked up inside of our app router with the dynamic segment. So let's actually go ahead and update our links when the user is actually using our default locale. So inside of our components, just to see from a high level, we had this layout inside of the layout. We had this header. Inside of this header is where we are rendering this links to go to the home page and go to the about page. And as you can see inside of our links, we have this language property to be included in the link. Now, what we want to do is we want to check conditionally if this language is actually our default language. We don't want to do this. We just want to send them to forward slash home. But instead of doing this conditional check here, why not we actually create a custom link component? So let's create a custom link component and here we're going to implement this functionality for our custom links where we're going to return a next link component and here let's actually expect some props like href we want to know what the language is and maybe the rest of the props now down here, I want to check and see if the user actually is using the default language. So let's say is default lang equals to if this language property is equal to i18n that we defined and our default locale. And if that's the case, let's just create a path that we can pass in to our link component. We're going to say if they're trying to access the default language, we're going to use the href. Otherwise, we're going to send them to a link or a, an href or a path that has this lang property on them and then the href. Okay, so this is going to have this href set to this path and then we want to also spread the rest of the props that was sent here. Now let's also type this. So type 
custom link props let's define some href that's a string it's going to have a lang that's also a string it's going to have children which is react dot react node and then we're going to have other stuff which have a key of string and they can be of type any okay just bring this custom type down here okay save this up so let's just review what we have done here so we created a custom link component that takes in an href as a prop and the current language which is the dynamic segment or the locale that the user is trying to access and then is deciding to see if they are actually using the default locale and if so we don't want to include this locale inside of our links so therefore if they're clicking on the home page we just want to send them to home page they're clicking on the about page it's just for a slash about and we do not include this line property and we're just using the next link down here to render our links so going back to our headers if i save this going back to our headers we can now replace them with our custom link so let's just update this to use the custom link now the custom link actually now expects a language property so let's pass the home page here and then the lang property is whatever lang property that's passed to this component as the header and down here is just going to be for slash about and then the lang property is again this lang property that's sent to this page component okay i have a typo here so let's save that so again i have updated my custom links to now have the href now this time in the href i'm not including any uh, language or locale here i just say this needs to go to the home page but this is the language or the locale the user is actually on so mix them up and decide where you want to send them and down here just for slash about for the href and then combined with this language property or locale this custom link component can decide where to send the user okay so if i go back now uh, if i access the home page and on the home page if i click the about page instead of sending me to for slash e and for slash about now it's sending me to just for slash about but if i change to this uh, german language and if i click on the about page here it goes to for slash de for slash about so it's working correctly when i'm actually switching the languages to english or to german but another thing that doesn't work now or we have to also update is this language switcher because right now if i'm on the german language let's say on the about page if i try to access the en it works it sends me to for slash en for slash about but we have to update it so it only sends me to for slash about so let's close all of this here let's go to our components this language or local switcher is what we implemented to actually map over all of the locales that we support and for each one actually render this links that we, we can see here and to decide where we need to send the user once they click any of these buttons we had this function up here so redirect path name this was getting every locale that was mapped over inside of here if there was any er, there wasn't any path name we were just sending them to or returning for slash and if there was a path name we would split by this for slash we would insert the current locale that we are mapping over here inside of the segments of this path name and then join them back with with a for slash so for example if we are on for slash about it would just be turned to for slash en about or for slash de for slash about now what we want to do here is i want to see if the path name is missing locale so same thing as what we did inside the middleware we're going to map over our locales that's defined in our own config and for every locale here if we're just going to test and see if our path name actually starts with the locale or the path name is actually for slash locale which is for our home pages now if the path is missing a locale what i want to do here is actually 
check to see if the locale is the default locale. And if it is, and we are missing the locale, I'm not going to add the locale to it. I'm just going to return the path name. Otherwise, if it's not the default, well, I want to add the locale into it. So that's the first step for when the path is actually missing the locale. But if the path is not missing the locale and we do have the locale, well, if we want to go to the default locale, we want to remove that locale from it. So therefore, for our default locales, we don't have that EN inside of it. And if it is something other than our default locale, we want to do the same thing we were doing before by inserting that specific locale into our path segments. So here I'm checking to see if the locale we are trying to access is the default. I want to remove the locale from the path name. I'm splitting the path name by forward slash to get my segments. If my segments are only two, which means I was on the home page, the forward slash, and also the locale, I just want to forward to forward slash, which is our home page. And if I was on any other path that had a locale inside of it, by calling this splice, I'm actually removing that locale from the URL and then uh, joining back the segments of our path name with a forward slash. And if the locale is not the default locale, well, we're doing exactly what we were doing before. So from a high level, what we did here or what we added here is to check whether or not uh, the specific path name we want to pass in or the user is currently on has the locale inside of it or not. If it doesn't have it, we want to only add it if it's not the default locale. And if it already has it and we want to go to our default locale, we're just going to remove it. Otherwise, we're just going to replace it with the locale they're trying to access and passing it down here. Now, if I save this and go back to our application, let's also refresh our page here. Let's go ahead and go access the home page. Now, if I go to the about using the links, it works. Now, if I click on the DE, it should redirect me to forward slash DE forward slash about. I can then change to the home page, still in German language or about page. And now if I click on the EN, it just forwards me to forward slash about and removes the locale from it. And it will be the same thing if I'm accessing the home page. So that's it for this video, folks. We remove the default locale from our URL by updating our middleware to rewrite the URL if the user is accessing our default language and redirect in all other cases. We also had to update our link component to not include the locale if, again, the user is on the default language. We also updated the locale switcher to look at the current path name and decide whether or not to include the locale. I hope you learned something from this video. If you have any questions, like always, hit me up in the comments, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.